are Nikki and Carlo and our family live in Positano, Italy, nearly 500 steps from the road but surrounded by fruit and olive trees and with a fabulous view. Our garden overlooks the sea and we grow our own food. We show you what life is really like on the Amalfi Coast. So please subscribe and welcome to the Positano Diary. Lately, we have a new morning routine. You see, while I was in England, I would wake up early and take Indy out for a long walk before breakfast. Here, high above this vertical town, it's not so easy to find land to walk on horizontally. And the thought of climbing 500 steps up to the road for a dog walk before breakfast is not very enticing. So, we asked our kind neighbours if we could walk in their land and they agreed that we could with no hesitation. Terraces of olive groves stretch across the mountainside, the sea glittering far below. We let ourselves in via an old gate and duck under the nets, wiping spider webs from our faces. Soon the nets will be unfurled to catch the ripe olives and we'll have to find another route through the trees. But for now, we weave our way to the end of the terraces where we find an old bed frame gate that leads to the gardens known as the Petsi Bassi the lower pieces. These lower gardens host the grapevines that make our neighbours wine and the view from the centre of the gardens is, in my opinion, one of the best in town. This is where I would come on those long days of lockdown when we felt cut off from the world, we couldn't hear any traffic, we couldn't hear any people and we were unsure whether there was anybody left outside of our tiny little valley. I would walk down to here and see the town below me, hear the sounds and know that I was not alone. Nowadays we have our freedom back and this has become our beautiful morning dog walk. It's time to head home for breakfast, get dressed and get ready for the day ahead. Dai, fate i bravi, noi torniamo presto, ok? Io mi sento una merda quando li dobbiamo lasciare a casa. Non mi piace. Ok, solo per un paio di ore. Mm. Dai, andiamo, non mi ci fa pensare su.
Il sbattimento. In settembre. Allora, siamo qua di nuovo da Francesco oggi, perché siccome molti di voi hanno guardato il video e Francesco ha avuto qualche vendita in più, ha pensato di darmi un'altra camicia, grazie a voi. Sono venuto qua eh, già l'altro giorno e Francesco mi ha fatto una prova e eh, adesso la camicia dovrebbe essere pronta. Non per tutti la camicia va bene subito, nel mio caso ho dovuto fare qualche modifica perché c'è un po' di pancia e quindi mi ha fatto delle modifiche ma adesso scriveremo anche il nome da qualche parte Francesco in questo momento è molto occupato quindi andiamo di là, andiamo a misurare qualche cappello che ne dici di questo? troppo alto? un altro bianco? come va? no? Oh wow, <ride> allora quello bianco ho capito. Come hai fatto un buco? Non necessariamente la scritta deve essere così lungo, così grande. Io l'ho voluto così. Francesco piace di più. Normalmente facciamo le iniziali. Carlo ha voluto questa bella scritta che è il suo... Questo è il mio logo. Il tuo logo. Anche sulle camicie abbiamo tantissimi colori. Uh, si può scegliere il colore con cui farlo, magari un abbinamento. Non so, con... Allora Carlo, sei contento? Molto. Finalmente la, la tua frase, il tuo cavallo sì, di mi, battaglia. Mi piace da morire. Grazie Francesco e grazie a voi per avermi regalato una nuova camicia. Uno solo, Carlo, due. Questo è perché non abbiamo portato i doggies, non c'è spazio. Our mosquito netting is now about nine years old. It's looking slightly worse from wear, especially down here. Mimi! come si è rotta la rete. Ok, è arrivato il momento di cambiarla. Adesso la tolgo di qua e devo smontare la maniglia e smontare tutto e fare tutto da capo. Adesso non sentite la sua risposta. Allora, sono rimasti qualche chiodino qua. Se sarò fortunato, lo metterò nel buco dove già stavano. È arrivato il momento di tagliare gli eccessi. Questa rete non va messa troppo tesa perché altrimenti poi troppo tesa, basta urtarla leggermente e si potrebbe rompere, perché questo non, eh, non è del tipo, diciamo, molto resistente. Siccome alla ferramenta appositano avevano solo questa, eh, sembra che io faccio le cose perfette, ma non è vero. Eh, non ho avuto la pazienza di aspettare e di andare a vedere in un altro posto se ce n'avevano una più resistente. Comunque, quella vecchia è durata più di vent'anni, questa qua penso che durerà altrettanto. Poi bisogna chiedere a Indy se è d'accordo. You agree?
sembra che è andata apposta. It works. We've recorded a special program to celebrate the 90th birthday of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth. Now, to mark the very sad news of the death of Her Majesty the Queen. We revisit those heartwarming stories and in particular the wonderful music. The sad news of the Queen's passing stirred up feelings in many of us. I think it was particularly strange for the many British citizens living in other countries, like me. Sadness, homesickness, and a need to gather loved ones close. We decided to have a comforting Sunday lunch and an afternoon in the garden with friends and guests. Preparing the food for these lunches is something I love to do. I listen to BBC Radio 2, which connects me to England. I sing along to the good songs and I even enjoy the traffic reports. Today I'm making pasta al forno, an easy oven-baked pasta dish. I'm sure Elizabeth will bring dessert. Over the last year I've put together a new recipe book with all the things we eat, lots of colourful photos and a few short stories. I'm really pleased with the way it turned out and I was going to sell it as an e-book but unfortunately my website won't let me upload it as it's over 300 megabytes, a ridiculously small limit. So I have no way of selling it for now, unless anyone has any ideas. As predicted, Elizabeth brought dessert, <laughs> lovely little lemon meringues and strawberry tarts, and they were all gone in an instant. We finished the afternoon with a garden tour from Luca to see the newly planted winter veg. <laughs> Questa è rucola. Questa è rughetta. Eh? Questa è, è il broccolo calabrese. Ah, mi piace. Mm? Quello là con le foglie un po' più larghe che è cavolo cappuccio. Sì. Quello là mm -hmm. che fa così. Sì. E poi ci sta e tutte le altre cose uguali come queste qua. No. Morto meto. Tomato. Pomodori sopra. Pomodori là. The next day was a big day for the girls. A new school term was about to begin. Bist du schon aufgeregt, Rosi? Leni, come ti senti? Bella. Sì, sei pronta per la scuola? Sì. Allora, oggi è il primo giorno di scuola di Rosi che lei ha fatto sei anni e da oggi lei va nella stessa scuola come Leni, la scuola elementare di Positana e è molto orgogliosa e vi facciamo vedere che serve per andare a scuola a Positana. Ci abbiamo un pantalone blu, una maglietta bianca con questo simbolo e poi ci abbiamo una felpa blu con lo stesso simbolo. E tutti i bambini hanno le stesse, le stesse cose? Sì, solo lo zaino che è diverso. Mm -hmm. Rosy che va in prima c'è lo zaino arancione, invece io che devo andare in quarta ce l'ho grigio. Le Ma seconde... tutti i bimbi, o no? Hanno... Tutti i bimbi, tipo la seconda c'ha un colore, la quarta c'ha un colore, te... la terza c'ha un altro colore. So I'm preparing a little snack 
this neck break of Lynn and Rosie. In general, they have like an apple, carrot, or cucumber, a little piece of bread with Philadelphia, or Lenny likes to bring to school a yogurt. Uh, this is what uh, um, my girls eat for snack time. Um, I wanted to explain um, the school system here. Positano has a certain project called Senza Zaino, which means without backpack. And this means that um, like all the workers who go to offices, they don't carry all the things like the scissors and the folders and the paper, whatever they, work, or they need for work. They don't carry it every day home and back to the workplace. Also, our kids should don't carry all the things back and forth. Um, the backpack is only filled uh, during the um, school year with a folder with a certain pieces of paper they need at home to do something. But in general, um, this um, project uh, based on uh, Montessori uh, and the real name is Senza Zaino without backpack um, tries to um, uh, give more responsibility to the kids to make the environment of the school uh, friendlier and to give them uh, the possibility to um, communicate and collaborate in like um, on their uh, in, in the school atmosphere together uh, between the kids. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Soll ich in dir tragen, Rosi, bis zur Schule? Rosie, Rosie, questo sarà la tua classe, vedi? Qua sopra. Setz dich hin irgendwo, wo du magst, Leni. One day in mid-June, there was a thunderstorm here on the Amalfi Coast. And we were at home that day, we had a couple of friends round and we'd all been sitting outside here actually, uh, chatting and having snacks. And suddenly it poured and poured with rain, everybody dashed inside and we were vlogging. So there is a video with this and we got out tambourines and bongos and we were dancing around the kitchen. And at one point I realized that the rain was really, really heavy. So I dashed outside and filmed a couple of little videos. Didn't really think much more about it. Now this was in June when we had all the beautiful Seven Sisters roses flowering in the um, little entranceway here. And it was still quite bright for a thunderstorm because often when there's a thunderstorm here, it goes very dark. But it was just perfect conditions. The rain was pouring down the steps at the side of the front door. The front door was shut. You could see into the house. The lights were on inside. There was people bobbing up and down. And it was just a very short, I think it was about nine second video and a couple of weeks ago i posted it as a reel on instagram now i'm not much of a real person i've hardly ever posted them and it's just not something that i'm really into i prefer photos that's why i joined instagram in the first place but this reel um got quite popular <laughs> and that's the british coming out in me when i say quite popular it went viral and when i say it went viral it went rather incredibly viral. Uh, this morning, last time I checked, it had had 21.2 million views, which is absolutely ridiculous. Crazy. If you think 20 million, you can't even fathom 20 million people have seen my front door. Okay, whatever. Anyhow, I thought I would address a few of the comments that have come with that. Now, obviously, most people watching that reel have no idea who I am. They don't watch my videos on YouTube and they've got no clue where the house is or anything. But there was quite a few people concerned about global warming and climate change with the rain pouring down the steps at the side of the house. And I just wanted to clear up any doubts here, whether anybody will ever see this or not, I don't know. But we live on a mountain. We live on a very steep mountain. In fact, just to get from this house up to the road, it's nearly 500 steps. And what happens when it pours with rain and you're living on a very steep mountain is that the rain pours down the mountain and will find any channel it can to get down. So on that day, it was pouring down from the top garden, just down the steps at the side of the house where we have a gutter at the bottom here, and then it's channeled out onto the pathway below. 
We also have a dry stream running down this side of the house here and it's 98.9% .9 of the time completely dry but when there is a rainstorm and heavy rain it will turn into a raging torrent with waterfalls shooting off the bottom of the garden which is quite spectacular. So when this happens you can't really walk up and down the steps at the side of the house because they also become a stream and it would be quite dangerous sometimes rocks come down as well but it is perfectly safe to live here it's not dangerous for the house the stream is off that side this is just water channeling down from all the terraced gardens and they're just coming down the steps and there's a gutter right at the bottom of the steps and it just goes down there so it's perfectly safe and it also does not mean that the house is old stinky and moldy which was one of the comments I read. The house is not mouldy, <laughs> we're perfectly well insulated from the weather and the rain will dry up within about half an hour. The raging torrent stopped, it's gone dry again and everything's back to normal. One other comment from the person who said, I want that old couple to adopt me. No, sorry. And if you're calling us old, you need to go and live life a bit. I'm not old yet. Anyhow, the other thing I wanted to mention was what happens when a reel goes viral, because it probably went viral on other places as well, but I don't have Facebook, TikTok or Twitter or anything else apart from Instagram and YouTube, so I have no idea whether it made it to those places. So first of all, you don't earn anything on Instagram. Instagram, people that earn on Instagram is because they're doing paid partnerships and sponsored posts. I don't get offered any of that. I've never been offered anything like that. So I have not earned a single penny from my 21 million views on my video, which is fine. And no, I haven't been offered anything. Nothing changes except the numbers. Yes, all the numbers have gone up and I doubled my followers in a couple of weeks. And that's really all that's happened. I don't change. My feed doesn't change. Nothing's changed at all. If I wanted one thing to change, it would be the elusive publishing deal for the two books that I've worked so hard on. But there's no guarantee of anything like that happening. Um, I think some people consider that if you've got a certain number of following on Instagram that you're an influencer, but I think you're an only an influencer if you're actually physically influencing and and being sent things and doing sponsored posts and partnerships and stuff like that. I don't get any of that. I don't do any of that. And I've never been offered any of that. So I don't consider myself an influencer at all. I'm just a person who <laughs> had a very bizarrely viral video because a lot of people seem to like my front door. Which brings me to the point of the thought that I was actually considering repainting my front door sort of like a sagey green colour to go with the kitchen tiles and and the new kitchen and everything. But I think after this, I think a lot of people like my front door the way it is. So I feel like I should leave it alone. What do you think? Thank you for watching today's video. I hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you to all my patrons for being my patrons. And thank you for everybody who has subscribed. Please consider subscribing if you haven't. And hopefully we will see you all again next Sunday. Have a good week. Quanti bimbi siete? Hai trovato già nuovi amici? Sì. E come si chiama una? Veronica. Che avete fatto oggi? Oggi abbiamo fatto un disegno sul quaderno. Oh, sul quaderno blu. Sul quaderno blu. E come è andata la tua settimana, Leni? Bene. Tutto regolare, tutti amici uguali, tutti... Tutto uguale. Quanti siete? Eh, 17. Ho avuto i primi compiti della settimana da quando ho iniziato e eh, non erano difficili.